something's been to, well, you guys had like a crazy road trip and then you finally went back and you had exams, but how's just this last week or so of practice been to really get back down? To I think it's been crazy. Me, Chris, we're all sitting in the locker room. We're like, it feels like it's like we're in the middle of February going into April or just like, it just feels like. Olivia's over here if anyone wants to come start with her. Yep, it just feels like super late and we're only in December. But I think that's also um, a positive side to look at it. You know, it's only December and we have so many people out. So I think by the time we get everyone healthy, everyone back, um, it's going to be good. But I think we're definitely getting the flow of things. So we're not not scared by any means. We're going to work with what we have and um, going to go out and play. So. For you, if your role specifically changing with Nika and Paige out, how mm. how much more comfortable do you feel? I know gameplay is actually different, but between mm. UCLA and also getting into practice to to actually you know work through like being a point guard and everything. Mm -hmm. No, I feel? feel super comfortable. Um, the one I played, the one my first two years at Tennessee, and was one before that. Um, but I think my my team just it's a sense of calmness when they know I'm bringing it up. But I told them like told Kristen and Carol like y'all got to bring it up too. So, <laughs> um, just just being out there and just you know obviously having three guards is difficult. Um, but it's what our it's what the cards we got dealt and we're gonna deal with it. So was that game exhausting? Was the UCLA game were you exhausted? After? I think Georgia Tech because it was our first game we didn't know so any warm ups. We're, we're cutting through everything. So I think UCLA, I was in the warm-ups, we were just like, hey, like, just, you know, we, there's only seven of us. Let's just, you know, we still, still got to have our energy up high, but just just relax. Don't do too much. Uh, so the UCLA game was definitely um, better for us, kind of having that Georgia, Georgia Tech game first. Um, but, no, it definitely get, does get tiring. But, I mean, it gets tiring. You played, like, 39 mm -hmm. minutes, and they, they kind of – uh, beat you up a little bit. So yeah. Like, yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> That's all right. I'm curious, well, I, too. I was going to follow that because i never seen you miss foul shots like you did, and, uh, and you yes. looked really tired taking Oh, my them. goodness. Yes. I mean, I've been working on it all week this week. Like, mm -hmm. it's been a big emphasis when I stepped into the line. Just, it wasn't out that everyone was going in. It felt like everyone was going in. Um, but that's still my mindset when I step into the line. I'm not scared by any means. My confidence hasn't dropped at the foul line. I know once I'm going to get up there, I'm going to make it like I usually do. So it was just an off game um, from the free throw line. But um, we'll be back. And I know teams are going to definitely going to foul us on purpose to see what we're, what we're going to do. So now I'm excited to step up to the line. I'm curious as to the focus y'all put on your half-court offense, especially amid what Louisville is known to do mm -hmm. on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. I think we're just kind of uh, really just been simplifying it um, for us, just kind of reading the defense. And I think that we understand that they apply a lot of pressure on defense. So, like, back cutting is going to be huge for us. Um, just reading the, all their overplays. They're going to be really aggressive, but I think Coach made a great point is that it's going to be a really fun basketball play, a really fun basketball game to play in. Um, and it's going to open the floor up. If they're going to want to, you know, press this full court all game or um, be all up on us all game, um, which is a smart, smart game plan if they're able to stop us. So, we'll see. Did something click for you guys, especially in the second half of the UCLA game? It you know, the first half, you had to do a lot of the heavy lifting offensively, mm -hmm. but then it looked like by the, you know, the end of the third quarter, you guys were, like, looking like some of the best offense you've played all season. Yeah, no, I think we just found our sense of offensive rhythm. Um, mm -hmm. And throughout the game, I think you want to have that. And I think for it to, for us, for it to happen for us in the second half was huge. Um, but we've always kind of had a drop in the fourth quarter, and that's always been a big emphasis, like, the end of practice. Like, we can't just drop off. Our energy can't just drop off. So um, for us to, you know, get a rhythm, get a flow going in, going into the second half was, was great, and I think it gave us the energy that we needed on defense as well. It's pretty balanced, too. Everyone yes. was contributing. Yes. No, it was amazing. Dorka was crashing the boards. <laughs> Carol was out there talking. I was surprised. Uh, Christine was out there, and Amari came in, contributed. So it was in our bench was amazing. It also seemed like you and Olivia sort of developed a real chemistry on pick and roll, especially in that second half. I guess how much of a focus is that moving forward, especially to establish the, the balance that Alexa just referred to? Yeah, I don't think Liv gets enough credit because Liv is so smart. She's she's a five man who's able to pass. She can dribble the ball up, you know. Um, she wants to be a guard out there, and she reads the defense in, in a phenomenal way. So I know as soon as I come off the ball screen, she's reading it just how I'm reading it when I have the ball in my hands. So she knows when she's open, she knows that she'll step back and tell me to shoot it. So we, have, we definitely build a chemistry just over the past year. Um, and she's, she, like I said, she doesn't get enough credit 
doesn't get enough credit for how well she does that. We also saw Nafisa Collier out there yes. with y'all. Oh my gosh, yes. We seen her in the in the training room. I had freaked out for a second. I was like, you've got a bun in the oven. She was like, <laughs> yes, I do. But she was out there. I mean, just having her out there um, for the little bit of the time that we got like to play with her is just like, I because I never play with her. So it's just like, I'll see you in the W next year. Is <laughs> <laughs> it good? Having all the practices with you guys before the game broke a tech, didn't end up playing. Same with UCLA. How have mm -hmm. you seen her just process this year with being sidelined again and again with injuries? Yeah, it's it's definitely hard. Um, obviously, we haven't been through it with all the injuries and stuff. It's hard, but you just have to keep the right mindset um, and the right people around you. You know, it's all you want to do is kind of just go back to your room, just be alone. You know, Paige just kind of just wants to do the same. She texts me, he's like, I just want to be in the island for two months and then come back. I'm like, that's probably the worst thing that she could do. Um, but being through that, I understand that. I understand the feeling of like, I'll just get through it alone. But that's probably, like I said, that's the worst um, possible thing that you could do. So I think just making sure us, we're doing our part as teammates, making sure like they're still involved, they're still around. Nika does a great job in making sure, you know, she's still clapping, her voice is still heard on the bench or in practice, AZ the same thing. Um, so just all of them, you know, just making sure like, hey, you guys are still part of the team, no matter if you're hurt, no matter if wh whatever the case may be. But it's, uh, I do have a soft spot for Aubrey, um, just cause it's been all year for her. But I told her, look, when it rains, it pours, but it can't get any worse than this. Whatever happens, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna move on. It's amazing to, not amazing, but exciting to see Dorka um, hit her stride in that UCLA game. And yes, I was excited for everyone else to see. We knew that she can do it yeah, and she's been doing yeah. it in mm -hmm. practice. So I think mm -hmm. it was more exciting for, for me, for for other people to see what she can do. I was getting texts like Dia. So I was like, I've been known. I knew Dia was tough. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just glad that you guys are now just realizing yeah. and I, that she was able to showcase herself in that way. And awesome. Caroline too, like really seems to like each time she's yes. out there more and more yes. comfortable. How have yes. you seen her, especially with the you know the guard depth yeah. issue? How has that been for her? No, she she's had to step up, and I told her like, look, I know you may not want to do certain things, but now you have to, you know. So I know mm -hmm. you may not want to bring up the ball, but if you get the rebound, you just gotta go. Mm -hmm. Every shot, every three point shot that you got in this open, take it. Is every she... job the basket you have, take it. Mm -hmm. You know. So, but then she's definitely gained so much confidence. I mean, she's only a freshman. So mm -hmm. just, you know, her, I know, under, I understand that the pressure that she has is a lot, but she's handled it very well. She seems like even, even if she misses, she just keeps shooting. Like mm -hmm. she doesn't give up. Like she kind of battles. Cause she knows she's going to hear my voice if she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got to keep shooting, but like she takes, she takes great shots. Um, she's tough. Her back cuts her. We get on her all the time. Like you're a world-class back cutter. You know, whenever you back cut is, you know, we already know that you're going to be open. So she does a great job. So we, we, we obviously we don't see you all the time, but um, you you guys haven't like lost confidence or anything. You still seem like yourself. You haven't had like this big crisis or anything. It's mm -hmm. just figuring it out, right? Yeah, like, and I think still... that's and I think that's with every team. You know, every team's going to go uh, go through like a little slump. Every team's not going to play their best every single game. Um, with the amount of people that we have on the team now, we just have to figure it out. We can't feel sorry for ourselves. No one else feeling sorry for us. But lucky for us, no one expects us to win anymore. No one expects us to, and even though we're still UConn, like, oh, okay, this is gonna be an easy game for us. Like everyone wants a piece of us now. And we like that. And I think we like that little edge, like, okay, you guys want a piece of us, but there's, there's, we still got some, we still got some people. So I think we're just excited just, just to showcase that. I want to build off of Maggie's question a little bit when it comes to how the folks who are injured are, are dealing with this. I'm curious as to what you've seen them do when it comes to, I guess, learning another dimension of the game. I know mm -hmm. that's something people talk about when they're injured. They, they take advantage of the time mm -hmm. and then they become even sharper when it mm -hmm. comes to IQ and scout and, so from your observations, sort of what have you seen from those folks, you know, how they're spending their time um, on the sideline? I think, um, well, Paige um, obviously had just started, but specifically for Nika and um, Aubrey, like they do a great job, like they're able to see. And I think it's hard sometimes when you're out there playing, you don't see certain things, you don't feel, you don't, you can't see how the energy looks. It might feel a certain type of way. So needs come over like, no, what he's saying, like, he's like, that's what it looks like. But playing out there doesn't feel like that. But I, I like it better when a teammate tells us, like, okay, he's not just yelling. Like, it really <laughs> looks like that. So now we got to fix it. Even Aubrey's like, no, like, it looks dead out there. Like, you guys need to change the energy, whatever it may be. So I think for them watching, kind of seeing it now, that then when they're able to come back and fix it and not have the same problems be relevant is, is huge. 
um, and it does, it builds your IQ. You see different things. You're trying to understand different cuts or whatever it is on defense. Um, but I think you just, and I think you also just, you get a better understanding of your teammates as well. So it's a big point. How important is that as someone who's gone through having to watch from the sidelines, how important is that as just a way to stay afloat and kind of stay involved with the team because you can't be out there and playing? That's, I mean, it's a huge point. Like I had touched on earlier, they're still a part of the team, whether or not they, and I feel like when I was her, I feel like at times like, damn, I'm not out there at all. I'm not even a part of the team. I'm c contributing in, in no way. But, you know, my teammates um, are on me every day, like you're still part of the team. Like don't get in this mindset that you're not. So just, like I said, just keep talking to them. And I love that when they're, you know, they're in the huddles with us still. We we go over and we huddle with Paige because she can't walk. Like and she's still giving our, her input and things like that. So we're not allowing them to, you know, bury themselves in this hole that it feels like, you know, that you want to be in when you're hurt. Um, Paige, I'm sorry. No, I'm Paige sorry. seemed to be really involved Saturday. I was sitting down next to the bench and yeah. you can see her. No, every... heard she was like, someone said that she climbed over a chair. I was like, yes. hey, you're doing too much. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 I mean, yeah. she, when you guys would come off of timeout or something, she was mm -hmm. in your ear, mm -hmm. no, yeah. Kristen's ear. That's, and that's what we need. And we love that. She's still a leader on the team. Um, so I think especially for our younger guys and just even as an older guy, just someone who's who's who used to be out there who can see it, you know, and it's another teammate. It's not a coach just, you know, that we're used to them harping on us, used to them getting on us. Of course, we're going to listen. But when it's when it comes to your teammate, it's a, it hits a little hits a little more, I think. <laughs> Back to what you said at the start, how it already feels like it's February or mm -hmm. March. In what ways does it feel like that for you? I think it's just like so much is going on. You know, COVID is picking up. Um, just people are getting hurt. Um, not only on our team, but just on other teams. It feels like we've played 20 games and we're on game eight, I think. So it just, it just, it feels like it's been a long time. But I think <clears throat> I was telling my team now, okay, like everyone's kind of like, it's around Christmas time, everyone's ready to go home. Now we gotta like, now it's time to pick it up, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is where all the teams are kind of, they're kind of, you know, like they get in a comfortable spot or they just want to relax or get comfortable. So now this is our time to amp it up a little bit.